And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this uh, Tuesday, February 28th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here you can find at IndianCountryNews.com. The uh, Cherokee Nation Industries, the Manufacturing and Distribution Division of Cherokee Nation Businesses, today announced that it had received a 2011 Boeing Performance Excellent Award. The Boeing Company issues the award annually to recognize suppliers who have achieved superior performance. CNI maintain a silver composite performance rating for each month of the 12-month performance period from October 1, 2010 through September 30th of 2011 last year. This year, Boeing recognized 529 suppliers who achieved either a gold or silver lever Boeing Performance Excellent Award last year, and CNI is only one of 407 suppliers to receive that silver level of recognition. Cherokee Nation Enterprises supplies wire harnessing assemblies to Boeing for defense aircrafts, operating out of a 120,000 square foot uh, manufacturing facility in Stillwell, Oklahoma. The company has a rich history of supplying quality products and services to the commercial and defense aerospace industries for going on almost 30 years now. Also, in December, President Obama signed an executive order creating the White House Initiative on American Indian and Alaska Native Education, which is beginning to start up. The director of that new effort is William Mendoza, a member of the Oglala Sioux and a graduate of Fort Lewis College in Colorado. According to the U.S. Department of Education, the new initiative uh, is going to help expand educational opportunities and improve educational outcomes for all American Indian and Alaska Native students. The order includes opportunities to learn their native languages, cultures, and histories and receive a complete and competitive education that prepares them for college and a career. As for the initiative's new leader, Mr. Mendoza grew up on the Pine Ridge and Rosebud Reservations of South Dakota where he would uh, go on to earn a master's degree from Montana State University. Mendoza returned to the Pine Ridge to start his professional career as a high school teacher, but it is his desire, it was his desire, to do more which drove him to higher levels of educational leadership. Before being named director of this White House initiative, he served as acting director of the White House Initiative on Tribal Colleges and Universities. And skating around the internet today, we found a very popular vid video for an event that happened and we reported on last October, but without this bird's eye view and with a massive charge of TNT, Detonated at the base of the Condit Dam, the White Salmon River roared back to life. We thought you might like to watch it, so here it is. Penned up and drowned under a reservoir since the 125-foot-tall dam was completed in 1913, the White Salmon quickly found its natural channel. Engineers had predicted it could take up to six hours to drain the northwestern lake, which covered 92 acres and stretched 1.8 miles upstream. But the river was free-flowing within two hours of blasting through a drain tunnel at the base of the dam at 12:11 uh, p.m. on that day. Thomas Hickey, senior hydro engineer for Pacific Corp, said all went as planned on the breach. And while the river was a muddy mess, sluicing out some of the 2.4 million cubic yards of sediment that gathered up behind the dam, scientists had expected that to occur. They planned ahead. Salvaged 679 adult Thule Fall Schnook before, uh, before that blast from the dam last fall, and they carried the fish up above the dam to spawn. By then, scientists hope winter storms, and, and by now, the scientists have hoped that winter storms will have rinsed out much uh, more of the sediment that was left behind, and salmon will recolonize the upper river uh, starting right now and into the future. Built with fish ladders, the dam's fish passage equipment nonetheless was rudimentary and blew out in floods, leaving the dam without any fish, pa uh, fish passage since 1918, which was the five years after that dam was built. A dozen years after carpeting manufacturer Holitex closed its former warehouse, the facility has never looked so massive. 
Maybe it's because it's new owner that Delaware tried to spend a million dollars last year upgrading and expanding it, or maybe it just uh, appears that way now because it's empty. But a walk through its corridor with Jerry Kennedy, executive director of the tribe's economic development group, shows the warehouse is swollen with potential. We're trying to make it uh, where it's kind of an incubator center for startup businesses that are hopefully focused on green technology or at least a business that can't destroy the planet and can employ people, Kennedy said. The tribe shelled out $3 million for the new Green Tech Center in 2009. It's 250,000 square feet of covered concrete floor, and Kennedy envisions it will soon be bustling with activity from several manufacturing and assembly companies that will be producing products to be distributed nationwide. Last year, with a $250,000 federal grant matched by the tribe, a solar array was installed on top of the Delaware Tribal Complex, uh, which located in Anadarko. The solar panels uh, knocked off about a third of the complex's daily energy use, but its impact was more demonstrative than anything. The goal, Kennedy said, is to start assembling those same kind of panels from within the confines of the Green Tech Warehouse. Already, the tribe owns a solar power developer in New Jersey, Unami Solar, and he said in a feasibility study is planned for this summer that will bring several coastal solar panel manufacturers to the Anadarko facility with the hopes that one of them will be sold on the idea of assembling them right there. Delaware Tribe on the move. The Confederated Colville Tribes announced an agreement last week to accept a $193 million settlement offer from the federal government for mismanaging tribal lands. The uh, agreement is one of the largest Indian trust management settlements in U.S. history. According to Colville Tribal Chairman Michael Finley, uh, he was speaking to the Wanachi World. The U.S. Department of Justice is expected to sign the agreement in the next two weeks, according to Finley. The Colvilles filed the suit in 2005, alleging the government sold tribal timber and leased its rangeland for less than market value for years. The case marked one of about 60 tribal trust lawsuits, which have been pending for a decade involving mismanagement of tribal lands, and of course is uh, different from the uh, Colbell settlement as well. A San Diego County, California tribe claims developers bulldoze a sacred site during construction of a road. The Puma Band of Luzino Indians has occupied land in Fallbrook, where Polymer College is building Horse Ranch Creek Road to serve its future campus and three future housing and commercial developments. Tribal officials tell the North County Times that bulldozers cleared an area considered sacred last Thursday. The tribe said it's now guarding several uncleared sites where ancient human remains and artifacts have been found in the past. A college statement says it will work with the Native American community as the road work continues. And tomorrow, join with us while we talk with our favorite Mark Trey Hunt from of all places in Milan, Italy, I believe. And uh, he's going to be reporting on uh, the primaries tomorrow with the re uh, Republican candidates that are going on in Arizona and Michigan and an update on what it all means for that race between Santorum, Gingrich, Ron Paul, and Mitt Romney. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of Native News Update. Thank you for joining with us and come back again soon. We'll be there if we don't get snowed under. Miigwech.